All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up today. We're going to be in Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. You might go, there's a book in the Bible called Micah. There is. There is. Great little book. A small prophet. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. Micah. He's there. Powerful little book. You could read it once, uh, read it as many times as you want. Enjoy it. But Micah 6, verse 8, it's where we're going to wrap up our series on how to discover and walk in the will of God. Micah 6, verse 8. And I love this verse because it's very comprehensive. Um, there's so many verses, so many Old Testament examples we could look at about the will of God and those that walked in it. I mean, Jonah, the book before Micah, Jonah, God says, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah says, I'm going to Tarshish. Uh, you know, Jonah says, I'm not going to walk in your will. And God supernaturally orchestrated events. A storm overtook the boat he was on. They, they knew it was divine. Uh, Jonah ends up saying, it's me, my God. Uh, I'm not obeying him. They throw him over. A great fish swallows him up, spits him up on the shores of Nineveh. And he's able to accomplish God's will for his life. Some consequences attached there, you know, three days in the belly of a great fish, the acid, the, the pigmentation in your skin being gone, all the hair in your body being burned away, your clothes. You know, it's a pretty big consequence, a little bit of goofiness there. But that's what happens when we decide to do it our own way rather than just walking in God's will. But here in Micah 6, very straightforward prophet gives us simply how to walk in the will of God. What is God expecting of us? The big picture where we'll wrap up our study here. Micah 6 verse 8, it says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. God has shown you what is good. If you're listening to this devotion today, it's for a reason. And God has shown you what's good. Meaning, if you do not yet know what sin is, you're not yet born again. If you don't know what sin is, if you don't know there's things that hurt God, there's things that if you walk in them, you are walking in rebellion against the God who created you, who loves you, who died for you, and who is in complete control, who is God and not man, who is a creator, not a created being. And he's shown you this. He's shown you the difference between right from wrong. There was a day in your life, there was a day in my life, you, we had a conscience, but we were not yet born again. We might have said that's wrong, that's right, but that's different than going, when I do this, I'm sinning against God. David says in Psalm 51, against you and you alone have I sinned. It's very important we see this. He has shown you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? So God has shown you what's good, what's evil. He's also shown you what God says, I require this of you. This is what I expect from you. This is what it is. But to do justly. God wants us to do justly. God wants us to walk in justice. He wants us to treat others the way we want to be treated. That's the, you know, the big picture. You want to know how God wants you to live your life on a daily basis in your marriage, with your kids, right? In your singleness, at work, in the church, in sharing the gospel with the lost. It's the golden rule that Jesus gave. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Micah says it like this. Do justly. Number two, this is God's will. To walk humbly, uh, to love mercy, excuse me, to love mercy. He says, I want you to love what you get. I want you to give the mercy out to others, God says, that I give to you. This is my will. You know, um, whenever you see in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament, the idea of a weaker brother, that you who are spiritual need to bear with the scruples of the weak, it's always referring to a Christian who is legalistic, legalistic, meaning they have these rules, these sets uh, uh, of rules and regulations that they believe, you know, is keeping them close to God. Um, and God is going, okay, you know, and it's usually a newer Christian. Sometimes it may be somebody who's just grown very slowly and just struggles with it. But God says, I want you to love mercy. I want you to realize um, 
It's by grace you've been saved through faith, right? I want you to show the mercy to others that I ultimately show to you. The reason why you're close to me today, God would say, is not because of how good you've been, but because of how good I am. And it's very important. And God, through the prophet Micah, says, now this is my will, right? I want you to love mercy. I want you to love showing mercy to others. It's such a blessing when we can, somebody sinned against us, we can show them mercy. We cannot give them what they deserve. And grace goes even one step farther, which grace is God gives us what we don't deserve, which is really wonderful. And lastly, to walk humbly with your God. This is the will of God, that we would do justly, that we would love mercy, and that we would walk humbly with our God, that we wouldn't go around boasting, prideful, puffed up, walking in pride, the center of pride is I, but that we would walk humbly with our God. You know, if you walk with Jesus, if you are walking with Jesus, one thing you can't miss is what he says in Matthew chapter 11. He says, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls with me. You know, the only autobiographical statement Jesus gives about himself is in Matthew chapter 11 where he says, for I am meek and lowly of heart and you will find rest for your soul. I will tell you, one thing I've learned from Jesus is that to be a little meeker, to be lowly of heart, to, to walk humbly with God, that when you go into his presence, uh, we don't tell him what to do. We don't shout out demands, you know, I'm not saying don't be real with God, but I also don't think you should be foolish, you know. I don't think you should be, be foolish. I don't think you should go into a bank either and say, listen, I'm an American citizen. Give me all your money because there'll be consequences for that, you know. You're, <laughs> they're going to think you're robbing the place and you're going to go to jail, right, you know. You're going to go to jail. We need to walk humbly with the Lord. We need to realize just because Jesus is meek and lowly of heart doesn't mean we should start bossing around and telling him what to do because it's not going to work. He's still God. It's just his character is meek and lowly. And the will of God for your and my life is to do justly, treat others the way we want to be treated. Number two, love mercy. Love showing people mercy. And number three, to walk humbly with the Lord. To walk humbly. To humble ourselves. To be willing to be humbled in relationships and circumstances to say, man, what just happened there really assaulted my pride, but I want to obey God. And the Lord will be pleased. Listen, you can walk in the will of God. You are the will of God. Your salvation has begun. You're saved. Now Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, right? Just start to unfold it. Realize the will of God is his word. The word of God is the will of God. The will of God is not a circumstance. It's not a location, but it's, what he wants to do in and through you. And if you let him do in you and through you what he wants, he'll get it done. He'll bring you where you need to be. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think or imagine. And I pray no matter what happens in the world out there, that in here and in here would be God's will being done. As, the, as Jesus taught us to pray, on earth as it's already being done in heaven. May your kingdom come, may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven in your life. And Father, that's our prayer. God, I pray for all of your people. I pray that your will would be unleashed on their lives like never before. That they would walk with you and talk with you. That your plans and your word and your purposes would be accomplished in their life starting today on until the rapture of the church, on into eternity. And God, I pray this now for them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.